What's going on guys? Ray here again with the Club Global, teaching men around the world to be men of the world. And today, we are gonna have a little part two talking about money. So that first video was just a short, brief prepper on some basic principles about living below your means. Uh, this video, we're gonna be a bit more bad cop and also give a few more tangible strategies on fixing your shitty money habits because, man, I really feel like the money thing is a big problem with people my age, all right? People in their 20s to mid 30 somethings uh, really struggling with personal finance habits and it's, it's deep rooted. So I also want to say first and foremost that it's important that you have to want to change these habits. All right, it's one thing to understand that, oh man, you know, I'm pretty wasteful with my money. Oh, I should put some money away. You know, I have pretty bad habits, they should change. But the bigger thing is, besides understanding that, is actually understanding that and actually making a change and being actionable, even putting together a plan to say, all right, I'm done being a wasteful, lazy piece of shit who's going nowhere with his financial life. I'm gonna start actually making a difference and actually doing something. And this is a theme throughout every part of your life. This is the same for getting healthy, all right, getting in shape, getting better with women, getting better in your career, and just having more, you know, having more of a go-get it kind of attitude in your life. Money is the same way, okay? You have to be productive and responsible with your finances. So with that said, let's get into it. So I talked in the other video about living below your means, okay? Spending less than you make and that extra going towards paying off debts and or putting money away in savings for an emergency fund. But let's get into that a little bit deeper because I know plenty of you are gonna watch this video and say, well shit man, I don't have enough money to even do that. All right, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. And I told you in the last video to go through your checking account, see what you're spending your money on, seeing where you can cut costs. I wanna give you a real simple example though. How many of you watching this video have gotten a paycheck and it immediately got wiped out? Say you had to pay some big bill, your rent was due, you had a cell phone, big cell phone bill that was over, or whatever, you had a late bill you had to pay, it was more money than you expected to have to pay for something, or your car broke down, some emergency expense came up, wiped out your checking account, now you got $3 left in your checking account. Or maybe you went negative and you got charged an overdraft fee, so you got like negative, whatever, $36 in your checking account. What do you do? Well, between that paycheck and your next paycheck, are you gonna die? Are you going starving? Are you getting kicked out on the street? No, you find a way to make it work, right? Whenever your checking account is zero, you make that somehow last for the next two weeks till you get paid again, right? Now just imagine if whatever you did during those two weeks to stretch that couple of bucks you have in your checking account, whatever you did to make that last, imagine if you did that with every paycheck, all right? Imagine if every time you got paid, you thought like you were broke and couldn't spend any money. There's an easy psychological way to do this. When you get paid, set up some kind of automatic process, all right, or when you get direct deposit, have most of your check go into a savings account. So when you get paid, you actually don't get paid very much money, all right? The money that you see that comes into your checking account that your debit card goes to gets a very small amount of your paycheck. The rest of it goes to a savings account. That's an easy way for out of sight, out of mind savings. So the money you see in your checking account, that's the money you have. If it's a little teeny amount of money, that sucks. You're broke, all right? Eat ramen and tuna fish for a few weeks, a few months. Do it now so you don't have to do it later. Trust me, being younger and dealing with financial struggles is way easier now than when you are older, I promise you that. The next thing, 
put some money in a retirement account. Now I know some of you out there who are 18, 19, 20, 21 are thinking, man, pff, fuck a retirement account, right? I'm gonna spend my money right now, I'm worried about retirement when I'm old. No, do it now, do it right now. Trust me, putting money away for retirement when you start in your late teens to early mid 20s is the best time to start saving. Compound interest is in your favor. Think of it the same way like when you get behind on a credit card and you get keep getting hit with those finance charges and that debt just racks up and up and up. That sucks. Be on the other side of that. Be the guy who's getting interest and it keeps compounding and racking up, all right? You start in your 20s, man, by the time you are in your 50s, 60s, dude, that money is gonna be huge. Even a little amount of money, all right? You put in whatever, just a few grand a year into a retirement account that earns a, you know, a measly six to seven percent interest a year, which is pretty humble. By the time you are 60, you're gonna have a lot of damn money. Trust me, enough money to live off of for the rest of your life without having to worry about getting another job or getting Social Security or some kind of handout to help you live. That will help you big time. If you have a company that has a 401k employer match program, use it. Absolutely use it. They take, I think they match what? It's anywhere from two to 5%, depending on what company you work for. Do the full amount that they match. If it's 3%, do 3% of your paycheck. If it's 5%, do 5% of your paycheck. They're literally giving you free money. Free money. It sounds like that's a scam, it's not. It's free money, trust me. If you put in 5%, they pay you 5%, you just made 10%, all right? That's 10% money you're putting away, and half of that you are not having to take out of your own paycheck. Do it, absolutely do it. Now, if you don't have an employer match program at your, wherever you work, you don't have 401k, whatever, start a Roth IRA. Most banks have those. Or just Google, you know, best Roth IRA. You'll probably get like Ally Bank or something like that, a bunch of popular online banks with savings accounts. Get a Roth IRA. What a Roth IRA is, basically, it is a retirement account that you put money into and you can draw on it when you are 59 and a half years old. Once you are 59 and a half years old, whatever money you start taking out of that account, you don't pay any taxes on. So here's the benefit. So you get paid your paycheck, your taxes are taken out, whatever. You put some of that money into the Roth IRA. Keep putting into it. You can put up to $6,000 a year into a Roth IRA. If you can manage it, I mean, it's 500 bucks a month, do it. Put that $6,000 in there every single year. And then when you are 59 and a half years old, you will have gained interest on that investment over time and it compounds, all right? And you cannot pay any taxes on that interest as long as you wait until you are 59 and a half years old to draw on it. That's awesome. You're not paying any income tax on the interest that you made. That's fantastic. So definitely do that. If you can't get a 401k, get a Roth IRA. Or if you have enough money you can put away each month, do both. Get a 401k and open a Roth IRA for yourself on the side. All right, it's all gonna help you out. Just think about your future. Think about it now. Don't think about it like it's later on, you're never gonna die, you're gonna go you know, live forever, don't worry about it, trust me. You're not gonna be working forever, you're gonna get old, you're gonna get sick of working for a living, you wanna have money set aside for yourself. Now let's expand some more on the illusion that you have to make X amount of dollars to do well for yourself. I'm gonna tell you, you do not need to be rich or whatever arbitrary number you have in mind that you feel like you have to make every single year in order to afford a comfortable life and be able to put money aside. You don't need that, all right? If you live properly under your means and you cultivate good, responsible personal finance habits, you can live on very little amounts of money and whatever paltry you know, salary you make, you can put away money and savings, trust me. You don't need to make six figures, a million dollars a year, you don't need to make any of that shit to be rich, all right? You don't need to be in the 1% to be wealthy. Let me put it to you this way. 
who is better off? The person making 40 grand a year or the person making $500,000 a year? It's a trick question. You can't answer that because you don't know what their balance sheet looks like, all right? You don't know what the guy who's making half a million a year, you don't know what his expenses are. You don't know how he manages his money. Same with the guy who makes 40 grand a year. I'll put it to you this way. Let's say the guy who makes 40 grand a year is able to live his life on a shoestring budget. He only spends 10 grand a year to live, all right? He lives with roommates. He only pays a few hundred bucks a month in rent, all right? He lives very thin. He's gonna pay as you go phone, pays like 20 bucks a month for it, whatever. He doesn't do any streaming services. Dude reads books, rides bikes, lift weights, all right? He's, he's living pretty good on a pretty small amount of money. He's putting away 30 grand a year. Now let's say the guy who makes half a million a year, let's say he's spending $480,000 a year on stuff. He's in a super expensive condo downtown in a major city, right? Maybe he lives in like San Diego or something like that, San Francisco. All right, say he had a couple of really cool cars. He pays huge payments on. He's paying a thousand bucks a month for each of them on top of his insurance. All right, he has a super expensive cell phone bill. He pays for like huge, big cable internet plan for his condo. All right, he's going on vacations all the time. He eats out at Michelin star restaurants all the time. He's living good, but he's only got 20 grand extra a year out of his $500,000 salary to be able to put in his savings for a rainy day fund in case out of nowhere, he loses his job. All right, so who actually is better off? The guy who's able to save 20 grand a year or the guy who's able to save 30 grand a year? Looks a little different now, doesn't it? Think of it that way. Think about how you're able to live and how much below your means you're able to live. Because if you're tapping out your salary, you're not doing so great. But if you're living below your salary, the more below your salary you can live, the better off you're doing because you have a lot more overhead and financial wiggle room in your life. And that is important. All right, so we talked about living below your means, right? We talked about spending habits. We talked about how you don't have to be rich to be wealthy. We talked about putting some money away for retirement. We talked about setting up automatic payments to a savings account. Let's do some more nitty gritties, okay? What kind of savings account should you get? Don't open a savings account at your shitty Bank of America with a 0.02% savings rate all right that sucks get a high yield savings account now savings uh interest rates fluctuate year to year depending on the economy okay right now interest rates are not very high but 0.8 percent at say ally bank is way better than 0.1 percent at bank of america or whatever the hell bank you're using so Open a high yield savings account. It'll earn you a little extra money. It's safe, it's liquid. You can get to that money in an emergency if you need it. So that would be the smart way to go on that. As far as saving for retirement, people get very intimidated by this. And it's because it involves investing. It involves a stock market. And it seems like this big hurdle to have to learn all this crazy professional financial mumbo jumbo about investing in the stock market, it does not. Trust me, you can learn a very fine base level of knowledge about investing in an afternoon, all right? Do a little bit of reading and you will learn, you know, a very great foundational knowledge of how to invest, all right, safely, long term. If you have a retirement account, a Roth IRA, a 401k, just dump all that money into index funds, all right? Index funds are fine. They have a great growth history. It's very stable, all right? S&P 500 indexes, they take, you know, a whole ton of companies and you buy a little, you know, buying a, a share of that buys you a little bit into each of those companies and all those companies together grow with the economy at a steady rate. You can look at the history and see over the past however many years it steadily grows. There's going to be ebbs and flows in the economy, but we're talking about retirement here, all right? We're talking about money you don't care about until 30, 40 years from now. Okay, 30, 40 years over time, that money is going to steadily increase, trust me. It's gonna increase at a rate of between five and 10% every year. 
So by the time you are in your 60s or whatever and you're ready to cash in your chips, or maybe even earlier than that, you know, maybe you do pretty well, you can retire in your 40s or your 50s, and that would be awesome. And you can start drawing on those retirement accounts, and man, you'll be doing pretty well because you've been diligent about putting money in those and putting them in nice, safe, stable growth index funds. So there's some very basic education for you. Do some reading on investing, all right? Very base level knowledge. You don't need to be a guru. You don't need to be some, some big money financial stockbroker at, you know, down on Wall Street to know a little bit about investing. Everybody should know a little bit about investing, but I don't wanna get ahead of myself, all right? We'll talk about, you know, right now we're at step zero or step 0 0.5. We'll get to step one in a different video, but I just, this video has kind of like hammer home to you the importance of learning the basics of personal finance expertise, all right? Financial literacy, knowing how to manage your money, not waste it, and harness the power of your cash. So let's say you're an average dude who's got some debt, who's living paycheck to paycheck, and you wanna be doing better. You wanna have extra money that you can put away in savings. If something happens, your car breaks down, you have money in the bank you can dip into to fix your car or put a down payment down on the new car because your car got ruined, whatever. Where do you start? What are some good resources? I'll give you a couple, okay? One good resource for just learning the basics of how to live below your means, save money, and get rid of debt uh, there is a blog called Mr. Money Mustache. Go to that blog, read everything you can, specifically the article about how debt is an emergency. Another great resource that some of you may have heard of is Dave Ramsey. Look up Dave Ramsey's Baby Steps. The Baby Step program from Dave Ramsey will teach you how to clear up your debt, start saving money for an emergency fund, and you grow this money snowball where eventually you have money to put a down payment down on the house or save for some other bigger investment down the road, put money away for retirement, all those kinds of things. These are some basic resources to get you going on mastering a little bit of personal finance. Anybody can do it. It's just about having a little bit of financial literacy that very few, especially millennials, seem to have. It's not rocket surgery, okay? This stuff isn't that hard. You don't need to be some, you know, PhD in financial economic analysis to know how to manage money. It's very simple. In fact, the reason why I'm making this video is because I think it's a very basic tool that every man should know. Just how to manage your money. And you know this too. Don't act ignorant to it. You know that deep down you're like, man, I'm fucking up with my money. What am I doing here? It's a basic thing you should know how to do. Manage your money. And man, for those of you out there who are married or you got a long-term girlfriend, all right, you're living with your significant other and you guys are used to living off of two incomes, all right, that's great and all, but for good financial mastery, structure your life around living off of one income, all right? I've talked in other videos about how you need to be self-sufficient and how you can't rely on somebody else being in your life to help pay for your life. All right, let's say your girlfriend or wife or whoever drops you and leaves tomorrow. What are you gonna do? You live in a house that you can't afford because you need two incomes to afford it or an apartment that you can't afford, all right? You got a car payment that she helps you out on or maybe she's paying your way and you're you know, trying to get your music career off the ground or some other non-starter project that she is helping you fund that hopefully will pay off in the future. Live in a way where you are financially self-sufficient. If you have to be alone, you can be alone. Or even better, if you and your girl are together, you can live off of one income. That is fantastic. Then the other person's income is just cake, all right? That's just money you can bank. So think about that too. That's an important thing to note if you are living with a significant other or you and your girl are combining finances. Live in a way where you can be financially solvent if you were alone. All right, so there we go. That's personal finance level zero, or level 0 0.5, we'll call it. All right, living below your means. You don't need to be rich to be wealthy. Put some money away in savings. 
pay off your debts, have an emergency fund, and have financial goals, okay? Change your spending habits. Change the way you think about money and what it does for you. Use those resources I mentioned earlier, all right? The Mr. Money Mustache blog, the Dave Ramsey Baby Step program. These are all super simple, very palatable, all right? Things, pieces of content to consume that will help you learn a bit about money and how to manage your finances. Every guy should know how to do this stuff. This is basic knowledge, all right? This is like keeping yourself healthy and breathing, knowing what foods to eat, knowing that you should stay active and not be a lazy piece of shit who's gonna wither away, all right? Money is the same thing. Be responsible with your money. Simple as that. This is not rocket surgery. Man, this stuff is 47.5%. No wonder I'm getting buzzed. Woo. So in closing, don't be dumb with your money, all right? Be smart, all right? Think about your money differently. Be responsible. Don't blame the world around you for your financial problems. The only person responsible for helping you out is yourself. So be savvy with your money, okay? Put some away so you're ready for anything that life might throw at you. You won't be caught off guard by an expensive bill, by your car breaking down, by any of that. And I'll tell you what, it's like anything else. It's like lifting weights, all right? It's like getting better at any skill. It's like playing an instrument, all right? The more you do it, the more you practice it over time, you will cultivate this habit of being good and responsible with it. And you will see that number growing in your savings account every week, every month. And it's going to be motivating. You're gonna be like, man, look at that. I have enough money in there where I can quit my job right now and not work for a year. And that's great, you know? If you wanna do that, maybe quit your job and go fuck off for a year and go travel or whatever. All right, money is power. It affords you a lot of great things and you don't need to be rich to do it, all right? You can do it on a very humble salary. Just cultivate some smart personal finance habits and you will be doing great. And with that, this is Ray with the Club Global signing out.